Hello, I'm Leanne Chivers, a guest presenter here on Create and Craft. I'm really excited to be involved in bringing these new to you videos to you where we talk to you about some of our really popular products on the Create and Craft channel. This little video is building on some of the other videos you might have seen about alcohol markers where we bring together the little techniques that we've learned and look how to start and apply them to colouring an image for the first time. So here I've got a really pretty floral image and it's good to start with florals because they're one of the easiest things to colour. So don't make life hard for yourself and try with a really complicated face and hair and texture. Just start off easy and really build up your experience and your confidence before you move on to the more complicated images. So what I've got is three alcohol markers. I've got a light, a medium and a dark tone, which is exactly the same as we described to you on the new to you video for when we looked at how to build volume and dimension. And we're going to apply the same techniques. Once you've learned the technique, it's very easy to continue and apply that to lots of different images. So we're going to work on one small petal at a time on my flower. You would never colour the whole flower in at once because your ink will dry too quickly. And if you remember from previous little new to you videos, we've talked about the fact that you really have to have wet ink for it to blend well. So we work on one petal at a time. So I fill that petal with my lightest colour. I then take my darkest colour and I add in where I want shade, so where I want it to be darkest on the image. And then I take my middle colour and I blend that dark into the light, into the medium, bringing the colour out a little bit further. I never go all the way back over it, I only go to the edge to blend it. So bring the medium colour in and then I come back to my lightest colour and I blend that medium back out into the first layer of light. And that starts to build the dimension up in your petal beautifully. And you would just continue to do that for the whole flower. So we'll do one more here. And you can see how that's starting to build up those little petals on the poppy so they look beautiful. Now, just to save you being bored watching me do that for a little while, we can fast forward to one that I've been working on and we can finish off with this little poppy down here. And you can see by working on one petal at a time, it really does start to bring that image to life because you can really build up your 3D dimension. And it, I can't stress enough how important it is to work on one small area at a time. So exactly as we've talked about before, the lightest all over so it's nice and wet, the darkest to put in your shade, the medium to join the two together, and then the lightest just to smooth out that edge of the e medium and to bring it back into the first layer. And that's how you're going to build up your dimension. And that works with any colour choice. The technique is the same regardless of the colour you're working with. So, lightest all over. And 
darkest where it's in shade, medium to join them. And light to join the medium into the first layer. And look how beautiful and 3D that little poppy flower looks. And you would use exactly the same technique for the leaves on the poppy. So what we'll do And then most alcohol markers will have a lovely fine bullet nib for you, which you see I've been using, and that will allow you to put in your fine detail for things like the stalks. And you don't need to worry about blending that, they're so tiny, you're just outlining them really. There we go, so that's how you bring an image to life. Now to really make it pop, what you need to do is take a light grey or a very light blue grey. There it is there, that's the one I want. And to really make your image pop out from the page, you're just going to draw an outline around it. So if we use one of the puppies, so you can see it, and I'll just do half so you can see the difference. You're literally just going to trace a line around your image. And the first time you do this, it does feel a little bit scary and you think you're going to spoil it. But just be brave because what you'll see is the side of the image that I do this to compared to the side of the image that we don't do it to. One will look much more 3D as though it's popping from the page than the other. It really does make a difference. Artists do this with a purpley colour with their images to make them look 3D. So why shouldn't you? Oh, spotted a little bit there that I haven't coloured. Let's fill it in. There we go. There we are. And what you'll be able to see by adding that little grey outline just on this half of the image, it really does look as though it's coming from the page much more than this side. Even though you've coloured it beautifully 3D, it just lifts it and makes it look something a little bit more special. And then when you pop that onto a piece of black card or whatever colour card you're making for your project and you line it up, it frames it beautifully and you've got something that you can pop onto any of the projects you're working with. And then you can apply that to lots and lots of different images. You can then start to get brave and do things like beautiful faces and hair. You can do country scenes if you'd prefer to. And you can even use your blender pen and create some special effects where the image requires it. There are so many different options for you with your alcohol markers. You're always going to get a beautiful result and you're going to be able to create unique little masterpieces that you can be really proud of. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I hope to see you on some new to use again soon.